What could you do in five hours? Well, you could, I don't know, write that book you've been thinking about, work on anything that you've been contemplating for for the however long time that you've been contemplating about it. You could, I don't know, sleep, you could clean, you could spend time with your significant other, a plethora of different things. You can go to a football game, a soccer game, um, a lot. You could do a lot. You could listen to five hours of, of my show, whatever it is. But with five hours, what could you do? Well, would you spend five hours waiting in line for barbecue? According to Aaron Franklin, the founder of Franklin's Barbecue, that's exactly what over 300,000 people do each and every year to his hit barbecue joint. Clever name, Franklin's Barbecue. Now, Barbecue is one of my favorite things in the world. It might be like the number one food choice. Uh, I just, I love me some barbecue. And it's something that I think I could eat all the time. I know when I go home, the one place that I always want to go to is a barbecue joint. Famous Dave's there. There's not one, but hours away from me where I live. So it's important for me to, you know, get the old uh, meat in when possible. But, like I said, 300,000 people wait in line for Franklin's Barbecue each and every year. It's a cult following. But here's what's crazy. So, each and every day, well, not Mondays, they're open Tuesdays to Sundays, and they open at 11, according to them, 1059. Now, I have been, I'm a big barbecue lover. I love to, to make barbecue, cook barbecue, whatever, bake barbecue whatever the exact vernacular is. I don't know. And it also doesn't matter. But a few years ago, I was looking on the old internet and I was looking for ways to improve my barbecue skills. And voila, something popped up from Aaron Franklin from Franklin's Barbecue. And it was something along the lines of his YouTube series that is a replay from his PBS how to barbecue better basically series and it's stuff on how to barbecue brisket how to do sausage uh, stuff about rubs and sauces and stuff like that actually there might not be stuff on sauces but it was interesting because this is probably back in like uh 2013 or so and it had a couple hundred thousand views on it and i was like oh this is interesting this guy's pretty cool let me learn about it but what i then learned was that Franklin's Barbecue is this uber popular place in Austin. It's basically dubbed as not only one of the best places to eat in Austin, but when you go to like Tourism Guide of Austin, you know, it's the, the number one place to go get food. Long lines, Tuesday through Sunday. So why is this happening? How has this business, Franklin's Barbecue, become such an anomaly? Well, I think there's a couple of things to think about. It's a party-like atmosphere, too. So as you are thinking about this, I, I want you to think about what they do, right? So here's a picture of people waiting in line for Franklin's Barbecue. It's ridiculous, right? So there they are there. But also, down the street, you can see they're waiting in line. And if you're not in line at a certain time, guess what? You're SOL. You're not, you're not getting the love, right? So if you want some of the Franklin's barbecue, you have got to be in line for it to happen. And guess what? Not everyone gets it because that once all the meat is out, it's gone, right? And so I thought it was important to talk about this because it's so many people want something they want more right and i and i've seen a lot of businesses over the years that try to make something too big right i can think of a restaurant where i live that was a corner spot very small 30 seats maybe including bar stools and they decided to go to a bigger spot 100 seats and it failed miserably even though it was three doors down and so i think it's so important to be thinking about that sense of urgency with your business, that kind of cult-like feeling that people have to be there six days a week. And barbecue is one of those iconic foods, those iconic foods that people love and want to consume over and over and over again. And it's something that people, like I said, are waiting 
willing to wait five hours a day for. The supply and demand alone is ridiculous. They apparently make 106 briskets a day, of which monthly is about 45,000 pounds of brisket. I don't know what on a scale that actually looks like. It seems like a lot. 300,000 people a year, obviously that's a lot, right? They have tons of burners or whatever they, smokers, whatever the you know exact wording is i I'm, I'm not a barbecue pit master people but what i like to do is i like to think about things that i love and then dissect what they do really 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 well and so the origins of franklin is it's aaron franklin and his wife and they started a food truck back in austin in 09 it did well lines out the door and they were hoping just to sell a couple of briskets a day right and that demand became so popular that they decided to open a brick and mortar and that brick and mortar got so popular that they decided that basically every day that they're open six days a week 11 to 2 ish is basically what it is that that's all they're going to do and that pent-up demand allows people to come back each and every day sure they could probably be open for breakfast sure they could probably be open for dinner but would they have a line out the door all the time if they did and it's a it's a question i think a lot of people in business need to think about do you really want the big thing or can you get more out of the limited and i think and it's not like these guys aren't working they're working 24 7 there was a bon appetit episode where they're basically working around the clock 24 7 so it's not like they're not there working you know the meat's got to smoke for 16 hours so someone has to be there tending to this so it's not like that's not happening but it was a conscious effort by the Franklins to not be open all the time. And I think that's so important and that actually helps their business. It helps them get more people in there all the time. Because if you think about it, waiting five hours in line wouldn't happen if they were open, let's say 11 to 10 every day, because then it would just be available all the time. So it wouldn't, the allure of it wouldn't be there. So there's something about the supply and demand. There's something about the party atmosphere. Atmosphere. There's something about the cult-like following. Who knows if this barbecue, I've never had it, by the way. Who knows if this barbecue is any better than the rest? In a, in a taste test, it probably would do well. Would it win every single time? My guess is no, right? Because all it is, is love, right? It's the love of barbecue, salt, pepper, um, some wood, and the meat, the fire, the meat, and that's it, right? Probably some vinegar somewhere. There's a little bit of speculation that there's some pickle juice somewhere in it, but who knows? My point is this, is that they started small, continued small, and because of that, it allowed them to build this cult-like following that really has gotten them international credibility. And because people see that, it's so important. And what I think is even more important about this is that when you search Franklin's Barbecue, they are in some very deep publications that are, are, are decently well known. I just watched a video of them on the Today Show. You know, stuff like that. Big media, right? Repeatable, searchable content is so important in this. And people are waiting five hours a day for this. But at the end of the day, it's something that people love, right? People love barbecue. Number two, people absolutely love that sense of urgency. Oh, I got to get there. I got to be there. Because if not, I'm not going to be able to be a part of that. And that's something that so many people don't think about. And so when you're thinking about building your brand, your business, your career, whatever, create that sense of urgency. It's something that so many people, I think, could do a better job of if they think about it from, you know, who could be, who are their number fans? Who are their number one fans? and supply them and see if that market alone is enough to build a business. Clearly with Franklin's it is. And I think all too often, I don't know what their business model is. I don't know how much money they make a year. My guess is millions of dollars, right? They're busting their tails and things are going great. I don't need to know the amount of money, right? 300,000 people at an average price per person at 20 bucks, do the math. What is that, 6 million bucks? You know, then there's the price of meat and everything like that. But my guess is they are doing just fine. I'm not good at math either. 300,000 people times 20 bucks a plate, 6 million bucks. See, I, I got a calculator. But would you like $6 million in your pocket? Did you know that 
Only 4% of businesses ever make it to a million dollars or more, and they're well above that, six times that is. So as you're thinking about, again, building more into your business, your brand, your career, think about the sense of urgency. Think about who really is looking for what you can supply and provide it to them. Oftentimes I think people think, I need this big, big, crazy number. I need all these people. When instead, you can get a small amount of people that will absolutely love you, be your champion, talk about you over and over and over again, and wait out the wait out the door, wait in line, out the door, English, Zach, six days a week. There's something to be said about that. It's the same thing with Chick-fil-A, right? They're like the leading franchise, and they're open six days a week, closed on Sundays. You ever think why, right? It's that demand. People want it. People wait for things that are amazing. But if you try to make something too big, and it's, it's like, uh, you know, in college, where did you go? You went to the bar, to the club, to the party scene that had the line out the door. Why? Because there's this sense that if people are waiting that long for something, it must be amazing. Even if it sucks. Clearly, it doesn't suck because people continue to wait in line for that thing. But it doesn't have to be barbecue, right? It could be a multitude of different businesses. It could probably be any business. But capping that at a certain amount of number of people, that sense of urgency, that supply and demand is something that so many people don't think about. And instead, they go, how can I have as many people as possible? When instead, you should probably be thinking about how can I have the least amount of people as possible so that you can get those people talking about you. You can create those champions. You can get you can get a multitude of different publications talking about you over and over and over again because they see that line. That line then becomes the story, right? It, it's not about the barbecue, obviously, is the piece of content that people are coming there for over and over and over again. But at the end of the day, people are getting in line because they are thinking, I got to be a part of this party. So if I ever go to Austin, guess where I'm going? To Franklin's Barbecue. And it's not just barbecue in Austin. It's the club in college. It's the school that you're trying to get into. Right? It's, it's the job that you really want. Why is it like that? Because there's a long line for it. And so think about ways that you can create long lines for people. And if that means that less people get something, think about Nintendos and Wiis and Xboxes. Oh, there's only a limited quantity. Black Friday, limited quantity. Why are people there? Limited quantity. Austin's Barbecue, limited quantity. Supplies, um, supplies while last, whatever the thing is. That's it. Figure out ways to create lines. Then hopefully have some amazing content. And that content is the food, the product, whatever you're supplying. Then out of that, <clears throat> create champions who like will go to bat for you and be like, I love this place. Here I am. I've never even been there. I'm talking about it. Right. Create people like this over and over again. And great things will happen. Create lines for people and amazing things will happen in your business. Hmm? All right, real quick. As you guys know, I wrote this book, Anomaly, How to Finally Stand Out from a Crowd. A lot of people have gotten their hands on it so far, but guess what? Technically, those were all advanced copies, right? So the official date the anomaly is coming out is this April 2nd of 2019. I almost said 2018 for the first time this year, but I didn't. 2019. And look, if I've ever made an impact on your life, I'd love for you to pick this up. You can go to ZachMillerSays.com slash anomaly. You could look for anomaly on Amazon. The Audible will be out soon. I would be forever grateful if you could pick up a copy. People that have read it are saying they can't put it down. Someone the other day that I talked to, I saw them 
on a Friday. Then I saw them again on Monday. Said, this book is amazing. People are saying it's the blueprint that they wish they had. And a ton of other things. So many good reviews, I can't even think of what they are. But if you're someone that's looking for ways to stand out for cheaper than the price of the book, this is exactly what it is. I wrote this book because after giving a, a webinar or a workshop, um, a lot of different times, a very similar webinar workshop um, many, many times, I recognized that I was getting this comment. Hey, Zach, I've been to a lot of these workshops before, not with you, but with other presenters. And I always left those events, those webinars, unsatisfied. I just felt like I didn't know what was next. I felt like that person was just pitching them to then take my really expensive course and become my consultant for tens of thousands of dollars. And honestly, even if I have that money, I, I don't think I was going to get the results. And so, but after your talk, I felt that actually I knew what to do next. So I said, well, how can I take the concepts in this book plus a billion other things that I've done with other people that have gotten amazing results and put it into one book. And that's exactly it. Anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd. If you want a copy, if you want a copy, actually, let's do this. Tell me you want a copy in the comments. Email me, Zach at startwithhatch.com or follow me at Zach Miller says everywhere. It's Z-A-C-K, not any other spelling. Z-A-C-K Miller says, S-A-Y-S. Wherever you consume content, I'm probably there. Message me and I'll give you the direct link. And maybe I'll throw in something special with it. Like uh, maybe I'll take a couple strands of my hair and provide that to you too. I don't know. But look, would love it if you could pick up a copy. Pre-order on Amazon now. It'll ar arrive April 2nd. The more pre-orders that Amazon gets, the more it becomes closer to you know, the number one best book on Amazon, which would be the most amazing thing ever. So it's 18 bucks. If you can buy one copy, that'd be amazing. If you can buy five, that'd be even amazinger. And if you could buy 10, that would be amazeballs. That's it. Appreciate you guys listening. Remember, back to the Franklin's barbecue piece. Create a cult-like following, create lines for people. And the more lines you create, the more people will get in that line. That's all I got. Peace and love. Bye. You're listening to Zach Miller Says.